Is it frustrating for you to look at how science was used as a, a cudgel with eugenics and all this other bullshit and then having people go, see, science is political. So how do I know that what you're telling me right now isn't just eugenics 2.0 and that it's real science and it's not just politically motivated gobbledygook? You know, yeah, that's an, honest, an honestly posed question. And I think I have a good reply to that. And I wrote this. You can Google it. if you. Uh, I wrote a, um, a sort of a a perspective piece. It, it, I originally posted it to Facebook as a note, but Facebook mm -hmm. got rid of their notes for some reason. I, I'm, it was my main means of communicating with people. It's long form entries rather than punchy things that you'd put in several times a day. But anyhow, it's not there. So it's on my own website. If you just, uh, the title of it is What Science Is and How and Why It Works. We'll That's link to that in the show notes. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. You, you should find what science is and how, and then put DeGrasse. Don't put in Tyson because Mike Tyson shows up and Tyson Chicken. <laughs> yeah. But DeGrasse and Titan is very a tight relationship with uh, my writings. Uh, so um, here's the point. Um, the physical sciences are less susceptible than sciences that involve human beings as subjects. But one of the most important things you have to carry with you is the capacity to judge whether what you end up thinking is true, what you think is true, but it's actually not, or something you think is not true that actually is. And when human beings are the subjects, it is some of the most susceptible science to the influence of bias. Not some of the most, it is the most susceptible science with regard to bias. And so if you have a study that is going there, you, you need extra attention given to it. And almost always when you have those kinds of studies, the people doing the study, whoever they are, end up at the top of the list. If they're men, then men are better than women. If they're white, then white is better than other colors. If they're European, then the European cultures are better. Than, and the anthropologist are ground zero for that level of bias in their scientific thinking. And there they are carrying the titles of scientists. So I'm happy to report that my fields, collectively the physical sciences, uh, that are, are we're susceptible to other kinds of biases. Like um, you really want this to be true because you invested 10 years of your life. And so you don't even see that it's false. And so you keep, mm -hmm cherry picking the data to, to support your own views, but I'm not you and I don't have your biases and look, it's not holding up, all right? So many a scientific career have ended or faded because people wouldn't relinquish some long earlier held thought that was not yet um, verified. So yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that science has been used in that way and I suspect will continue to be used in the fields that involve human beings as subjects it makes sense and I, I think it's it's hard for us to shake our concept of, i mean it takes generations if not longer for for people to i mean even when you look at things that are physical sciences i mean didn't we string up we didn't they string up galileo like you, you know you see these these scientists getting killed or was it aristotle i forget now like hey <laughs> you can't say that you know, this is okay. this is wrong. It was Galileo, right, who got executed for saying, "Hey, may, maybe the Earth is in the center." No, no, of he our, didn't get. He, he was imprisoned. Imprisoned. But, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Giordano Bruno got executed, burned upside down at the stake uh, in Italy for suggesting many things, but suggesting that um, there might be other worlds out there, not just Earth, and Earth might not be the only object of God's creation, mm -hmm. and so. One of his famous quotes is, your God is too small. <laughs> <laughs> that might Maybe. have been what got him hung upside down. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, if you look at that article, uh, what science is and how, by the way, it takes about four minutes to read. So it's a fast read. But you will see that the methods and tools of science as we now practice them uh, have only been in widespread use since about the year 1600. So since Galileo onward. And so it's about only 400 years. I and mean, that's nothing in the history of civilization. Yeah. So if you go back before Galileo, you have the whole world thinking, or many people thinking, Earth is flat. Or that, you know, 
Uh, there's all manner of thinking. And by the way, on the frontier of research, most results will be wrong. What matters is not what any scientist tells you or any one research project suggests. What matters is, has that been verified? Has it been duplicated? Not by just your, your friends in your own lab. Has it duplicated by one of your competitors? All right? It's only then, if you have some interesting result, will we then say, yep, you have arrived at a new objective truth about this world, then you put it in the books. Those objective truths do not later, are not later shown to be false. Hence my comment, science is true whether or not you believe in it. That's people want to sort of caricature it and say, listen to any scientist no matter what. No, no. It's the methods and tools of science, when invoked to their fullest, will establish what is objectively true, and that is not later shown to be false. So when people say, well, scientists once thought Earth was flat, well, that was before 1600. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Well, how about this? Uh, scientists used to have leeches and, and bleed you. Okay? Um, go back to that time and look at the research literature. It was not yet settled. That was a contested idea. Will this work? Will we not? Do we need the blood? Blood is an essence. We got this. So, so in that case, you're taking something that is on the, no pun intended, bleeding edge of medical research and something sort of catch on to people's fancies that doesn't make it the objective truth. So, so it's only when it's established. And how do we know when it's objective truth? When multiple studies demonstrate it. That's all. It's, it's that simple. And on the bleeding edge, most will turn out to be wrong. Interesting. Uh, I can now see people twisting that and going, well, then don't use anything new. Vaccines. The new vac don't oh, use no, no, it. No, 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 no. Something could be new, but if it's tested, go for it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just saying so, I don't so, want people yeah, to twist it, you know? Well, well, of course, well, they will, no matter what we say. The, 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 the twisters True. out there will do it yeah. no matter what we say. What I'm saying is, uh, for twist. someone to say, I'm not going to take the vaccine because it's not tested, it, yes, it has been tested. Yes, you can read the test results. Okay? So these are, these are people who have already made up their mind and are inventing reasons to justify the mind that they've already made up, and the reasons they're invoking are false. And so, because there are the studies, you can read them and you can find out what the side effects are, if any, or how severe they are, who was most susceptible to those side effects. You can then ask yourself, do I have those conditions that would make me mm -hmm. susceptible? You can, you can do this rather than say, I'm going to wait until it's tested. That's just, you've, you've been misinformed by whatever are your sources, your, your news sources have, sometimes don't have your own enlightenment in their interest.